Hey, what's up guys? You're watching Theo Joe Tech, and this video is gonna be about OLED computer monitors. They aren't really out yet. There's been one made by Dell, but I think we're gonna start to see these in the coming year, start to be a little bit more affordable if they make them at all, and why OLED monitors are going to be awesome and probably make all other types of monitors obsolete if computer monitor manufacturers can pull it off and fix some of the unique challenges involved in OLED monitors. Now, first of all, why are OLED monitors so awesome? Now, we all know that TVs that are OLED, if you've seen them, you know that they look amazing. They have the deepest blacks you can get with any type of display because the pixels are individually controlled, which means if there's something black on the screen, it's completely black because there's no backlight. And also, you have very good latency in OLED monitors. They have extremely low latency, possibly zero latency, near zero, zero latency, which means that with OLED monitors, you can do crazy stuff like possibly a thousand hertz monitors and basically no input. Even TN panels, which are known to be the fastest type of monitors, they have one millisecond input lag and one millisecond gray to gray, but OLED monitors, would be even faster than that, along with the other benefits that normally you would only get with an IPS or a really high quality display. So if we were able to get a computer monitor that is OLED, we would basically get the best of all worlds, of all the types of monitors. It would be extremely high frame rate potentially for gaming. Can you imagine a thousand hertz monitor? And then you would have zero input, so you would have no latency for flick shots and that, that sort of thing, it would be awesome. And then also, if you wanted to use it more professionally, you would get that high quality color accuracy. So you're probably thinking, now wait a minute, we have TVs that are OLED, why don't we have computer monitors? I already made a video talking about this, but I'll briefly do a recap for those of you who didn't see it. There are two main challenges that I'm aware of with OLED, and that is color degradation, and burn-in. Now, these are more of an issue with computer monitors as opposed to a TV. With a TV, burn-in isn't as much of an issue because it's not on all the time. A TV, you might binge watch a few hours a day, but it's not like a computer monitor where you have the computer monitor on for hours and hours on end every single day, maybe for eight hours a day while you're working. So on a TV, you turn it off every once in a while, and there was actually plasma TVs did have burn-in, but you know it wasn't so bad where it was unusable, whereas it would be on a computer monitor because, think about a computer monitor, you have the task bar, you have the closed window symbols at the top right, all these images on the screen are there the entire time. So it's gonna be the same parts of the screen on, those would burn in very quickly, because that's what burn-in is from, similar images staying on the screen. With a computer, burn-in is gonna be much more likely as opposed to a TV where you don't really get that much of the same images. You turn it off every once in a while, you change channels. On a computer, you don't change channels, that the Windows bar doesn't go away ever, it's gonna burn in. The second problem is color degradation. Now the thing about OLED is each pixel is actually made up of several sub-pixels. So to create any color in one pixel, you use several different colors. For example, red, green, and blue sub-pixels. They're like three of these sub-pixels might make up one pixel. Now, the issue is that each of these sub-pixels degrade at a different speed. I believe the blue sub-pixel, for example, degrades faster than the others, which means that as the monitor gets older, even after one year, the colors aren't gonna be right because all the blue sub-pixels aren't gonna be as bright, for example, or it's gonna shift to another color, and then what is on the screen is not gonna be right. This might not be a big problem for some uses, for example, gaming, where you probably don't really care about the color accuracy, but for some applications, such as a reference monitor for photo editing, it's really important that you have exactly the correct color, which is why we use IPS right now. IPS monitors are usually used for when the color has to be absolutely accurate. So if these challenges can be solved, or at least reduced, that's when I think we're gonna really see the OLED monitors start to come out, or at least at a reasonable price. Dell has their OLED monitor out, and it's about $5,000. And one example NVIDIA did 
of a VR panel they were showing off. It was 1700 Hertz. I do not know for sure that it was an OLED monitor, but I would have to guess that's what it would have been. I don't know if any other type of monitor can achieve that, but that's the kind of thing we can start to expect to see. Super high frame rate and the application in VR would be especially beneficial because that's when low latency is really important so you don't get motion smearing and motion sickness. Now if I had to guess, I would say that OLED monitors would first be marketed much towards gaming, not necessarily towards those professional applications where IPS monitors are the king. With gaming, there are plenty of people, myself included, who would jump at the opportunity to have a thousand hertz monitor no matter how bad the color quality is. Heck, I would play Counter-Strike in black and white if it meant I could have a thousand hertz just because it would be so neat. Maybe not quite black and white, but you get my point. The benefits of having super high refresh rate, low latency is going to strongly outweigh any minor burn-in or color degradation especially if you're aware of those and you can mitigate it with, for example, a screensaver. But I think VR especially would really like to see high refresh rate OLED because obviously with VR, the higher refresh rate, the more realistic it is. It's not like, oh, you can get a little bit faster reaction time. It's a matter of this scene looks absolutely real with high refresh rate and low latency, as opposed to just looking pretty good, but not really getting presence in VR. So let's just hope they start announcing more of these OLED monitors, even if the price is ridiculous. Remember when 4K TVs were $50,000? I'm actually kind of surprised that the Dell OLED monitor is only $5,000. That's a pretty good starting point because, you know, it's not unheard of to see a super high-end monitor that's $1,000. So I think maybe in a couple years, we'll start to see special purpose OLED monitors for gaming that are reasonably affordable for everyone. So you can bet that if they do start to come out with OLED monitors, I will be the first to get one just for my own sake and also be able to show you guys. We might be a little ways off of that, but hopefully sooner than later. So that's it. If you guys want to keep watching, I got some other videos on the right hand side. I'll put that other video that I mentioned about OLED monitors right there. You can click that or look in the description for the same link, like if you're on a phone. I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys either here on YouTube or on Twitter. You can tweet at me any ideas and also subscribe because I try to make new videos at least three times a week, so it should be worth it. So thank you guys again, looking forward to hearing from you. I will see you next time. Have a good one.